it's all ready to go my dear hello everybody it's another thursday night and everyone's not with us tonight so you are blessed with our company which is giselle and myself sidoni um and we're back for one of our other chats and tonight we are talking about marriage um so in the group this week we have had some conversations about um marriage possibly choosing a spouse and um I think we've been touched on the subject of celibacy. Um, so we thought, why not sort of have this conversation and perhaps lend our voices and our opinion um, on the subject. So I think because we are where we are in the world and society and culture, I think it's important to define, start off by defining what we believe marriage to be as Christians. Okay. Um, what is marriage, Jean? What is marriage? Well, isn't it in Ecclesiastes where it's said uh, that uh, the son shall leave his parents and take himself a wife? That's it. It's a, marriage is a man and a woman coming together in holy matrimony, pledging their vows before God to love honor obey in sickness and health richer for poorer better for worse till death do you part mm, so that's what a marriage um, is yeah so from our christian um perspective from our christian worldview which is what we're operating within the limits of and, and you know that's that's what we believe so we are going to base our conversation as based on that um that definition of marriage um and then obviously the world and, and and society and the law defines marriage to be many other things other than or on top of what we've just said but as christians we believe that that's how marriage is defined in the bible we believe that that's um the premises for marriage and so that's going to be the foundation of this conversation so we are going to be speaking about marriage as a union between a man and a woman come together in holy matrimony um, as ordained by God um, from our Christian perspective. Um, doesn't mean that if you are not Christian and you believe this to be um, not the right definition for marriage, that's fine, that's your opinion and, and you're perfectly okay to have that opinion. But that's not our opinion and that's not our belief. And so we beg to differ on that. Um, just to clear that up, say, because I know what we'll probably get is people emailing us to say, that's not marriage and, you know, marriage is X, Y, Z. But I'm just laying the foundation to say, we are going to be operating from the foundational basis of marriage is different by Christianity. And that's the basis for this conversation. Thanks, Jean. Now that we have defined that, we <laughs> yeah you put my head in the chopping block first didn't you yes you did oh. well because it's important you know because i know what's going to happen we get lots of emails in and lots of comments and lots of messages and people obviously have different opinions and different definitions but that's fine you know we're not we're not saying that's wrong or anything else but we are speaking our truth as we believe it to be in our bibles as defined by the god that we believe in and so I think it's important for us to lay that foundation so that anybody listening in on this conversation, either on playback or on YouTube, knows what we're talking about and where we're coming from um, before they even send us the messages that I know are going to come. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've defined that to be Now, one of the things that came up in the group, and it's always an interesting topic that comes up is the idea of being unequally yoked um so this is the idea of believers marrying non-believers mm -hmm. um and it's a big thing in the christian domain and um the christian world um you know the bible says people will often say bible says do not be unequally yoked yeah Gee, what do you believe that to be? And what do you think is the 
Christian approach on that stance? I'm probably very liberal here in this because um, if, say, it's a Christian woman and she meets a non-believer man, but he's a good man, doesn't do any harm, uh, looks after, would look after her well, would look after the children well, provide for them, work alongside and everything. I really don't see the issue. But um, I know there's an awful lot of church denominations that would not marry mm -hmm. a believing woman and a non-believing man. And again, mm -hmm. I'm going to put my head in the block. I'm going to say that's wrong because what that's doing is is forcing the non-believer further away from the faith. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if the union happens and they get married, there's every chance that the man will become a believer or mm -hmm. the non-believer, whichever spouse is, is the non-believer, would become mm -hmm. a believer. Um, is, say, a Christian woman going to go out and marry a mass murderer or a paedophile or a rapist or something like that? No, that would be really stupid to do that. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that. That would be. Um, Michael, my husband, he was a very new believer when he and I got married. And loads of people told me that uh, I would be unequally yoked. But how can you really judge somebody you're, that you're going to be unequally yoked with somebody? How can you judge somebody's spirituality? You, nobody can say that, um, oh, I'm better than him or he's better than me. What, what only God can tell is that. Hmm. Yeah, what what do you think, Sadonai? I'm I'm of the same opinion as you. Um, and like you know, I know we're going to get some backlash from this, especially from our ultra conservative members. Um, but I think the verse that gets quoted a lot at you know when this has been discussed is Second Corinthians six fourteen, where it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness? Now, I think, like, like you actually, Shazam, I think if, if you are with a morally upright person um, who is not a believer, I'm of the opinion that you can one with them as long as they do not interfere with your faith. Yes. Um, now you have people that are unbelievers that are adamant, that, you know, there is no God. And so if you're in the house with them, they won't allow you to go to church or they'll just make life difficult for you trying to get to church in the morning. They might set rules about, you know, how you're going to bring up the kids. So I think, you should certainly be having these conversations with anybody you intend on marrying if they are an unbeliever. They need to know your view stands, your viewpoints. They need to know your expectations as a believer in that relationship. They need to know that, hey, for example, should you be blessed with children, you would want to take them to church every Sunday. Yeah. You would want to read the Bible with them every Sunday. And at that point, it's for them then to say, actually, I'm not going to be comfortable with my kids learning that and say, let's call it quits. Or they might turn around and go, well, where's the harm in that? As long as the kids, you know, you're not doing anything bad to them, that's fine. They can go to church with you. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we can't, number one, we can't use a, a, a blanket brush stick over every single unbeliever because I think they're categories and I think they're nuances to different relationships. And I think they're unbelievers, for example, that will make life difficult for you as a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other unbelievers that will leave you perfectly alone to follow your faith. And, and, and in so doing, you will win them over. Because the Bible says say that. Exactly. 
And Sharon comes up with a brilliant question. Actually, I was going to ask it myself, but Sharon, mm. Sharon uh, uh, jumped in. And she says, what about when two people, non-Christians, get married mm. and one becomes a believer and the other doesn't? Mm. But the then, Bible's clear on that. It says do not divorce your husband. Exactly. And Vanessa is saying she disagrees with us both that we're not talking uh, from a biblical standpoint. Mm. That's okay. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I can see the argument for it. And I can see the argument, especially when the Christian is not allowed to practice their faith. Yes. Um, I can see the argument for not being and equally yoked and I can see how that can pose problems for your walks but I've also seen where people have been unequally yoked to use that phrase you know loosely but they have been allowed to practice their faith they have been allowed to raise their children as Christians yes and the other partner their spouse has let them do that and so in so doing their faith has not been affected by that so I think it very much depends you know, like, like you said, Giselle, obviously, if there's a case where the other person is really immoral um, and, like you say, you know, mass marriage, you know, or they just have a skewed, warped vision of the world, then of course we wouldn't, we wouldn't encourage that because that's going to make life difficult for you. Um, yeah, very much so. But, you know, we all know people that are perhaps moral people but are not christians yes um they won't stand in the way of your faith they won't stand in the way of you raising your children in the faith um and so why should you not why should you not you know i i think that's sort of where that's where i'm at in my mind trying to you know figure it out because i also think you know, if you're being persecuted in that marriage because you're a Christian, then don't even go into it. But I think these are conversations that you perhaps need to have before you get married. Exactly. I I I, I agree wholeheartedly. And you know, there's millions of couples married which are mixed religions mm. coming from Northern Ireland. Uh, there was always this divide between uh, Roman Catholic and Protestant and mm -hmm. a lot of mixed marriage is there and people say oh you're, you're going to have trouble there's going to be arguments which way the, ch the children are going to be brought up well no a lot of times that you they'll make an agreement when they have children that the children will be brought up in one faith there are some uh, you know there, there's there's other mixed religion marriages and they get on okay, okay together uh i'm sorry i'm reading what's going on in the chat that's here. okay um yeah uh what i think the, what, the, the way i'm looking at it is jesus didn't turn away anybody jesus mm. loved everybody mm. everybody that's born in the world no matter what color creed mm. culture status whatever mm. No, Phil mm. Boyd, Catholics and Protestants are not part of the same Christian religion. They're too different, so they are, darling. Mm. Um, but but also this 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 idea of being unequally yoked, really, if you if you know, if you really want to go down to the bottom of it, it, it cuts across all spheres of life. Now, marriage is is most definitely the closest spiritual relationship that you will have in your life because you know the bible is clear the two become one flesh um the closest even non-biological relationship that you will have is is through marriage right mm -hmm. but one could argue that this like this this um warning of not being unequally yoked cuts across all spheres of life yes it's in business it's in your colleagues it's with your friendships yeah. And so then do you then turn away or do you now not friends or do you not work with people or do you then not, or not work in organisations that do not have Christian um, values or are not outwardly Christian? You know, and, 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 and I think if we were really to follow it to the letter of the law, which I think you know, 
God allows us grace because I think, you know, it's not a mandate. Um, you know, we're not mandated by Jesus or, or God. For example, in the Ten Commandments, we're mandated to not commit adultery. We're mandated to not kill. But we're not mandated to not, not commit adultery. Now, God did tell the Israelites not to intermarry in certain parts of Deuteronomy. But, in, you know, Jesus repeats, for example, the commandments in the New Testament, including adultery and lust. But he doesn't, you know, talk about intermarrying. And I think this idea of unequally yoked communion is not just for marriage. If you really want to boil down to it, it cuts across the relationships. It cuts across who you do business with. It cuts across where you buy your things from, you know, because who you're working with, your colleagues, your friends. Um, if we really want to stick to the letter of the law, how many of us are unequally yoked with unbelievers, knowingly or unknowingly, to our everyday relationships? Yes. We probably are more than more than we realize. Now, like I said, I recognize that marriage is probably the closest, not probably, it's the closest non-biological relationship and the closest spiritual relationship that you will have. And I recognize that. Um, and I recognize that, you know, who you marry determines a lot of your life's projection. But I don't think that that decision should be based solely on the fact that they are on, are on are an unbeliever mm -hmm. i think there are other factors that should come up come into play and there are other discussions to be had and it shouldn't be no you're not you're not a believer so out the door you go yes like being honestly yoked that also means okay i'm getting on my new age thing again now so there's so mm -hmm. many new age denominations going about at the minute if somebody is orthodox Mm -hmm. and they marry a believer but mm -hmm. one's orthodox and the other's new age is that being on the mm -hmm. or do people in the chat consider that um okay vanessa mm -hmm. says i would rather play around i would rather pray pray round than park than marry a non-believer think she means I would rather play around and party than marry a non-believer but, mm. but if you're a believer and you're uh, willing to play around and party then you're not a believer because mm. uh, believers don't party and play around mm -hmm. and, and 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 if if you think about the idea of a yoke right um it's this thing where an ox obviously they put around the neck of an ox and then quite often it will be two oxes or oxen as they're called um, and then they'll put the weight in the middle for the ox to carry um, in, in the middle of the yoke and so the idea is that because you have two oxes of, of the same type the same stamina, stamina the idea is that the weight of what they're carrying in the middle is distributed evenly Mm -hmm. between the two okay yep. and so if you are unequally yoked then one side is carrying more of the weight than right. the other side that, than the okay? other. and that's the idea of, of a yoke right it doesn't mean that they won't go forward they might go forward they might not because the weight might just be too heavy for one person to carry and so the relationship just dies but in other cases, they might go forward, but you might find that the, the weight distribution is, is not distributed equally because the yoke doesn't balance. It's a bit like, you know, weighing scales. If it's too heavy on the one side, it weighs down. And if it's, you almost need it to be equal, you need the same amount of weight on both scales for it to balance equally. And, it, you know, when I think about the idea of a yoke, um, you know, that's, that's what comes to mind. Now, sometimes you get it where it's on, they're unequally yoked, as we're speaking, as we're talking about, they're unequally yoked, but the weight is carried. Um, it's unfairly distributed, but the ox does move forward and, and they do make progress, albeit slow progress, but they make progress. You do have it where the weight is so unequally distributed that 
you know, one side just falls because they're not able to carry the load. Um, and I think, you know, that's where prayer comes in. We need to be praying above all. Um, and just asking, you know, to reveal to us this, like the, the heart of the person that we're in, in consideration of, because only God can do that. You know, God won't choose a spouse for you. Um, you know, he says um, that a man will, he who finds a wife has found a good thing. God didn't say, I will give you a wife. He says, he who finds which one is Yeah. You have to find it yourself. So I don't, you know, I don't think God will choose a spouse for you. I think that's your responsibility. But I will say to you, believe strongly that you can ask him to reveal the nature of your spouse and the heart of, of not your spouse at that point, but the person you're intended to, to, you know, to put it a better way. I think you can certainly ask him to reveal the heart of your intended to you um, and where they are. And he will, he'll tell, he'll reveal it to you in, in so many subtle and not so subtle ways. Um, okay. All of a sudden you find yourself, you're having these conversations and, and then they're saying something and you're thinking, oh, I never quite thought you would, say this or I never quite thought you saw things this way and then things start unraveling and um, or you see you know you might be having those conversations and they were like well actually you know I was I was born and, and christened in a church and you know I just dropped out in my early teens and my 20s but I have no problem going back to it if I find a good church but it's in having those kind of conversations and praying about it that the Lord will reveal some of that to you and if not all of it, but I think if you just cut the unbeliever off because you believe they're unbelievers and you should not be equally yoked, I think you miss a chance. I, mean, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And as you said, you put it beautifully when you said that you know, the scripture that we're uh, reading from, don't be unequally yoked. It's talking about an ox with the weight on it, uh, or two oxes and the weight on it. And mm -hmm. if it's out of balance, the plying's not going to go straight. It's mm -hmm. not going to the, the the runs aren't going to be straight and even for mm -hmm. uh, for planting, and that really does like you said it beautifully, Sidoni. That if and say say a believing wife marries a non-believing man, she mm -hmm. should know have have it sorted out before the wedding that mm -hmm. she be allowed to carry on with her faith. That for her, God is first and foremost, mm -hmm. and if the man agrees to that. I don't see any problem with it. But yes, as you say, if he disagrees with it or prevents her from even tries to prevent her from going to church or having mm. fellowship and things like that, then mm. you know, if, she, if she knows all this before the marriage, run a mile. But if he's prepared to let her carry on or she's prepared to let him carry on with his faith, why not? Mm. You know, seriously, mm. why not? Because mm -hmm. if we keep pushing people away, as again you said it beautifully, you're on. If you take that vein, that line of it, that vein of it, then you're mm -hmm. unequally yoked with your work colleagues, mm -hmm. your pals. Are you going to walk away? Even your family, because not mm -hmm. everybody's family are believers. Not mm -hmm. not all of my family are believers, and I haven't mm -hmm. walked away and left my family. Mm -hmm. I pray for them and I'm hoping that one day they will come to know the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. we we got to we got to show we got to let the love of Jesus Christ shine through us and let other people see it. If we keep walking away, oh you're not a believer. And even some people, if you leave one church and go to another church, they cut you off, they shun you, they won't speak to you because you've got away. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. not good. That is mm -hmm. not showing the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's, mm. that's that's not mm, you know, that's even true if, even if somebody leaves your church and goes off to a new age a denomination or something don't shun them mm. try to gently encouragingly lovingly mm. show them the error of their ways and hope that they'll come back again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and also you know it's like you were saying earlier well, how how are you defining unbelievers are you is he cutting it down to those that are in the same denomination as you? Is it Protestants? Is it the Baptists? Is it the Catholics? You know, because I've heard, I've heard, um, you know, evangelicals, for example, that will 
say to you point blank that Catholics are not Christians. Yeah. And they're not believers. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. And I've Catholics that will say to you that evangelicals are just performers. They're not yeah. true Christians. And so yeah. you know, then you start having these interdenominational things. But I think, you know, I think you know, the Bible says test every spirit. And this is true for your intended as well. I think you need to test it i think you need to pray on it i think you shouldn't just shun somebody because they're an unbeliever i think they might very well reveal um traits to you that will make you i mean don't get me wrong being married to an unbeliever is not easy um it's Look, not it's not the easiest not easy either well this is true <laughs> this is true so don't get me wrong we're not saying that it's plain sailing you will probably have more challenges than you would being married to a believer if you're married to an unbeliever, okay? So we're not saying it's easy and we're not saying it's the first choice if you had a choice between a believer and an unbeliever because like the verse says, if you're unequally yoked, if you think about the image of a yoke, if you're unequally yoked, the burden is predominantly on you, especially the spiritual burden yep. will be on you. Um, whereas if you are equally yoked, the spiritual burden is shared and balanced. Exactly. So what we're not saying is that it's as easy a ride as being married to a believer. What we're not saying is if you have the option, choose a non-believer. Mm-hmm. But what we are what we are saying is don't dismiss somebody simply because they are unbeliever. We are also acknowledging the fact that being married to an unbeliever will have its own set of challenges that you perhaps will not face being married to a believer. So it's not an easy ride by all accounts. But what we are saying is pray that God will reveal the heart of that person to you. Because if you're happy to bear that load unequally um, and the person doesn't really get in your way and stop you from practicing your faith, then there might be instances where, and why not if they're a morally upright person? What were you going to say, Jay? I think you were going to say something just that. No, I wasn't. I'm just reading again the 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 uh, verse of uh, verses of two Corinthians six fourteen and eighteen. Mm. But you know, be ye not on the equally yoked, and you know, do not don't tell those who are unbelievers how can goodness be partnered with wicked. You see, it says it there. Mm. Don't be partnered with wicked. Now, because mm. you're a non-believer doesn't mean you're wicked. Mm. There are many. And even, but you could also flip that and say, even as a believer, you are wicked because you know the Bible says the heart of man is infinitely wicked. Who knows? We're all sinners. And so we could flip that and say. You are wicked. The only difference between you and the other person is that you know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and let's face it. There's a lot of very wicked Christians. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of very good non-believers. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I'll be absolutely honest with you. There's sometimes I think I would go to a non-believer for help before I would go to uh, a lot of churches for help. Because Mm -hmm. I find a lot of churches can be very judgmental, very Mm -hmm. condescending, very critical, Mm -hmm. very Mm -hmm. snobbish. Mm -hmm. But you go to a lot of times the non-believers, come on in, sit down, what can I do for you? Let me try to help you. And Mm -hmm. they're doing what believers should be doing. And a lot of times believers are very good people. They're doing all the right things. They just haven't found Christ yet. Mm. So I, yeah, the more we're talking about this, yes, it really is. It's there are wicked Christians and there are wicked non-believers. <laughs> you just have to pray yes. to God to reveal the hearts of the person to you. Um, because just as their heart is infinitely wicked, so is ours. Um, us as Christians can do some very wicked and terrible things, but for the grace of God. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so I think we need to buy us gifts, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things will be added unto you. And so if you are seeking to please God and you're seeking his kingdom first, he will add other things and he might even reveal to you. I go ahead and marry this person because he knows the plans he has for that person. He knows that 20 years down the line, that person is going to become a Christian through you. He might say to you, you know, yeah, yeah, not so bad. Go ahead and marry them. Or you might be like, no, don't go there. And I have seen into the future and this is bad news. Um, but I think if you're leaning into him and leaning into um, and asking for his wisdom um, and leaning not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledging him in every decision that you make, he will direct your path and he will guide you. And he will give you the wisdom and he'll give you the discernment to make that choice. Yeah. But I think what the point we're trying to make here is be open to the idea that the choice might be a morally upright, good, quote unquote, unbeliever. That's the point we're making. Um, I think, and I know, like you said, and I know some people will disagree with us vehemently. But that's the point we're making is that you know, God who sees the bigger picture, lean into him, acknowledge him in all your ways, lean in it on his, not your own understanding, but on him, and he will direct your path. Because he's just belong from the beginning. He might see that this person is not an, is, is an unbeliever now, but 10 years down the line, they're going to be a believer through you. And so in seeking God's face, you can actually say, well, go ahead, marry this person. I know the plans that I have for both of you because God knows the plans. And if you're asking him to show you those plans, to reveal them to you, then it might be a yes, it might be a no, it might be a later, but, you know, or, or maybe or later. But I think we shouldn't just shut up chance and close our hearts and close the doors to that possibility based on that one verse of mine. I agree. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, and we've gone through all scenarios tonight, but we haven't gone through the scenario that a real good, strong Christian couple get married mm -hmm. and several months or a couple of years down the road, mm -hmm. he or she turns from their faith. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this being unequally yoked really is staying away from evil doers, mm -hmm. not non-believers. Not all unbelievers are evil doers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of evil doers in the Christian Church today, because mm -hmm. the Church of England, the Anglican Church, saying that same-sex marriages should be blessed. Pope Francis is saying now that same-sex marriages uh, could be blessed. That's wrong. That's evil. I do know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I started to read or listen to the video two days ago about it, but I got distra not distracted. I got called away to something else, and I haven't finished the, watching the video. When I find it again and finish it, I'll I'll send it to you. But he's talking about sort of that 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 could happen. Um, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. So, but still, then people will continue to go to that same church. Then mm -hmm. are they being on week three? Because if they don't believe in it, they're going to a church that believes in it. It definitely is about uh, uh, wickedness in spirituality, in darkness, in evil doing. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Because it says what fellowship has. Yep. The light got to do with darkness. And I think you're right. You make a good distinction there between darkness and evil doing. And I think that's possibly what it points to, you know, people that are just dark and evil and just unrepentant and difficult and just refused anything good. And I think that's where, because we are called to be the light in darkness. We're called to be the, the source of the earth, you know, and I think we need to own that. And, and if we are asking God for discernment, he will show us how to navigate in these oh, relationships. Um, okay. You know, and I think it, it can be difficult because like I said earlier, you can look at your life and, and just think of the many, many ways in which you're unequally yoked with, with unbelievers in different spheres of life. Um, you know, yet we carry on. Um, and I think, you know, that 
there's got to be some kind of understanding to this to say it's got to leave room for the grace of God it's got to leave room for the wisdom of God and it's got to leave room for prayer and for God's plan to be at work in your life exactly. I don't think you should shut it off completely exactly based on that one verse no in second corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 through 18 my mm -hmm. nlt version says uh and it's entitled the temple of the living god don't team up with those who are unbelievers mm -hmm. how can goodness be partnered with wickedness how mm -hmm. can light with darkness uh, uh what harmony can there between uh, christ and the devil how mm -hmm. can a believer be a partner with a non-believer what a union can uh, there be between God's temple and idols? For there mm. are, uh, for we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, mm. come out from them and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy rags and I will welcome you. I will be your father. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's mm. about evil doing. That's not about mm. marrying a non-believer. Mm. Mm. Big, big time. Mm. Mm. That's about evil doing, and, and like it says there, just the evil of the of the world at the time, and the Canaanites and the idolatry, and everything else that was going on at that time. Um, I think that's setting a distinction between you who are of the Lord and, and the world and the evil that the evil doers in the world do unrepentantly. Um, you know, there's something to be said for that, but yeah, no, it's certainly interesting. And thanks, G, it's been a wonderful conversation. Um, yeah. yeah. Shall we pray out? Do you want to yeah, pray us there's, out? There's, there's some interesting comments in the chat. Oh. Okay. Yes, which we can uh, uh, read them and, and respond to them not later on tomorrow we'll, I'll do that because mm -hmm. I've been away all day been called out early this morning we didn't get our afternoon tea because mm. I had to, I was called away and I'm wrecked I really am so I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ready for bed I am mm. uh, it has been a very interesting conversation mm -hmm. we need to show the love of Christ through us to people I agree um, okay. I know uh, Nicola in the, in the chat said that uh, we have to be very careful when we meet people because they can be sh uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. they, they can be. They can be very, 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 very much. But even so, can believers. Yes, I was just thinking that as well. Yeah, because again, I'm still good on about the fact that there's a lot of non-believers are very good people. They do mm. good deeds. They go on foreign mission fields. They give up a lot of their time to help elderly people and everything. There's a lot of Christians wouldn't walk next door to check what their neighbours are like. Do their neighbours need a meal? But there's mm. a lot of non-believers do it. So um, just because you're a non-believer doesn't mean to say that you're a, a, an evil person and mm. that you'd be unequally yoked by marrying that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying about it, definitely. I agree. Well, thanks, G. Just as well, mm. you agreed. I'll have to come and slap you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's been a wonderful conversation. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. Um, shall we pray out? Yes. And say our good night. You pray, G. May go. Oh, you go. Thank you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh. Lord God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, El Shaddai, our Elohim. Lord, what Sidonia and I have spoken about tonight, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with what we've said. My Lord, I'm not saying that Sidonia and I are right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we're wrong either, but I do believe, Lord God Almighty, you gave us those words tonight to mm -hmm. speak out of our mouths. We do have to show the love of Christ to everyone. Mm -hmm. No matter they're a believer, a non-believer, a totally different religion, whatever, Lord. Even if they're a Satan worshiper, show the love of Christ through us. Mm -hmm. That is what we need to do, Father God. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm asking you to equip us with all the words and actions to say and do. 
that mm -hmm. will help people see you working through us mm -hmm. and yes the non-believers will come to receive you mm -hmm. lord the world's a crazy mixed up place at the moment mm -hmm. we have wars and rumors of wars going all on around the place and conflicts and just things going on and prices are rising all over the world for people and the cost of living it's, it's getting higher every second almost and it's a struggle for a lot of people to survive father god and all these things have to happen but lord i am asking that by the power of your holy spirit that you touch people the ones that are asleep to your truth the ones mm -hmm. that are asleep to your love Bring someone across our paths, Father God, that will speak to them about you and they will listen and they will come to receive you, Lord Jesus, as Lord and Saviour for their lives. Lord, let us, let us all make it our ambition in life that we are going to go to heaven and mm -hmm. we're going to take as many people with us as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. let, us, let that be our life's ambition here in the earthly realm. Lord, I give you thanks for my sister Sedona. What a wonderful woman of God she is, Father God. I am blessed not only to know her, but to have her as my sister in Christ, my twinny. Mm -hmm. She is my twinny. And Lord, we miss Naum. And you mm -hmm. know what Naum's going through at the moment, Lord. We're asking you to be with her. I'm asking mm -hmm. you, Father God, to give Sedona and her husband that supernatural strength that they need to mm -hmm. get them through these next weeks going to mm -hmm. visit schools for Elizabeth mm -hmm. and Lord guide them to the right school for her that will mm -hmm. be just that will just be absolutely awesome mm -hmm. and in everything that we are doing Father God I'm asking you to give us the your beautiful knowledge and your perfect wisdom to use that knowledge correctly I ask in the mighty name of Jesus Amen 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 Thanks Jean you're welcome, my dear. Right, everybody. Good night, everybody. Facebook land. Um, good night. Night That's night. Facebook turned off, and everybody in playback on Zoom and YouTube and Spotify. Good night. If you want to, you want to talk to us more about our faith, either you yes. agree or disagree with us, if you're seeking, if you would like prayer, on the youtube video our web addresses are mm. in the description on mm -hmm. spotify the web address is on spotify that's, that's true the christian woman in the uk facebook mm. group get in touch with us we're here to speak with yes and we'd love to hear from you oh we really would love to hear from <laughs> you we, we oh, would. definitely would so reach out to us we're here to help mm. okay good night and god bless you Bye. Bye. Bye.